Welcome back to Cards and Comics, and today I have a big epic mail day, and it's going to be an interesting mail day all the way up until we get to the national. Now, obviously, you know, I don't um, subscribe to the idea of just hoarding everything to the national, because if you get a good deal, you go ahead and make the deal before the national, because again, you may not find that deal at the national, and you may not get that car to the national. So, um, but there is this idea that, you know, like, Hey, you know, if it's not a great deal, then don't spend money and to get to the national, it's probably okay. But if it's a good deal, go ahead and pull the trigger. So I've been buying a few cards, still putting sets and collections together. And I want to share it with you guys. And then I am going to put a video out that I've been thinking about on what I think could actually be, um, at the national at a good value. So cards and or kind you know types of cards or or players that I think could be at a good price uh, to look at you know the national um, so that video is going to be coming out pretty soon so hopefully you want to you know uh, talk about that because I do think there's going to be some really interesting pricing in the national um, and I think there's going to be a few things that uh, you know can make that a very interesting show. I think there could be some good deals for folks. So as you know, you're buying cards and, and kind of building your collections. Um, it's a good time to really look at what's happening because there could be some cards that are uh, too far underpriced and, and worth picking up um, right now. And I think, you know, on eBay, we're seeing some deals and on other auction houses, but the national could be a very interesting time. So we're starting out here with a basketball card and, for people who know my channel, I don't do a lot of basketball, but there's always like one basketball card in almost every video. Now, this is just because I like refractors, and this is a 2007-2008 uh, Topps Chrome, and this is a 1957 Topps Basketball Chrome Refractor variant, or variation. I'm not in comic book world, so it's, it's, it's just a variation. Um, it's a refractor. It's numbered out of 999, and you can see the back here. It's a really cool card and try to find the numbering. There it is. There's your numbering 428 out of 999. I think it's just a really nice card. It, it's not uber rare. It's SGC graded right now. Um, in terms of pricing, SGC is really kind of stagnant. It's they're not really, um, growing in price, um, compared to PSA for, for a lot of cards. The, the gap is either widening or staying the same. So I'm not sure SGC is making up a lot of ground on PSA, but with BGS, I think they are making a little bit of ground, but I think that would be a very interesting video uh, for someone like me or maybe Neo or someone else to put out on, uh, you know, how is SGC doing versus BGS? Because no, I know for sure in vintage cards are not doing that hot against PSA. So that's card number one, my one basketball card. Now, I'm going to go into Marvel cards. Um, first up is a card I actually had kind of lost, but I found it um, actually at work. It was in a drawer, and I just kind of grabbed it. And so this is from Marvel Bronze Age, and this is 2011. Oh, there we go, 2011. Um, when they call these like sketch effects from Marvel Bronze Age, and this is Me Like a Car, and you can see her name right there. And it's uh, obviously uh, Miss Marvel um, sketch card. Now, this isn't the Miss Marvel who's just got a um, TV show. This is Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel. And then, you know, she was Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel. So, you know, different uh, versions of the Marvel character. But this is Me Like a Car, and this is a great sketch, and an early Me Like a Car sketch. 
Uh, she's one of the most, I think, uh, popular uh, sketch card artists um, that I'm, you know, that I like. And there might be people who like others better, but I, I'm I'm a big fan of her work. And, um, you know, this is one of her, I think, earlier sketch cards and did a great job in a lot of detail and a great um, and a great looking sketch there. So that's one sketch card. Now, the other card here I'm going to show you, uh, 96 Masterpieces. This is the base Spider-Man card, and I think it's a great Boris um, um, art. Uh, you can see the back here. Card number 45, I believe. Yep, 45. Good art. Um, very iconic. This is like, you know, iconic, um, most popular, um, you know, Marvel set, in my opinion, from the artwork perspective. So, you know, and it's the base Spider-Man. So it's actually in really good shape, which always shocks me. You know, these full bleed, no border uh, cards like this are very hard to keep from chipping. And you got to really look at the back to see if there's chipping. And this card's really nice. Uh, I don't see any real edge wear on this card. And so it might be worth getting graded because this is one of the most popular cards in the set. Um, so there's that card. Now the next cards I'm going to show you, I bought a set of these and I'm really interested in opening a full box. Um, the one thing that's not allowing me to think about a box is because how the set's made. Um, it's such, it's got good art it's really cool set, but you know, it's missing and it's a DC set. So again, I'm talking DC cards and it's Batman, but it's missing Harley Quinn. Um, so it's, it's it doesn't have every major character in it, but it's from 1995 and it's the Batman master series. Now this is probably the most emo, uh, <laughs> emo, uh, cards that I've ever seen because it's a 95 at the height of, let's say, the most, you know, dark and gritty period of DC and Batman. And the set itself uh, does a lot of, of, of call outs to a lot of the graphic novels for Batman. And the one thing I love about Batman is that, in my opinion, Batman has the most good stories. Or if you look at the stories told about Batman, and mostly in graphic novel form in these Elseworlds stories, they're just great. And, and I've even seen Spider-Man try to do some of these stories um, in Marvel. Like they took some of the same ideas and concepts that they put Batman through and put him, did that into, into the Marvel Universe. In fact, you know, Batman was a vampire at one point. Now you got v DC vampires, right? Uh, Batman went through a steampunk phase. So then you got uh, a steampunk Marvel set. So a lot, a lot of stuff that happened in the Batman comic book is just being kind of regurgitated in either other Marvel or DC books right now. And so D Batman had just tons of these great, I think, uh, one-off stories, much better than Spider-Man, in my opinion, in the same period. And so this set really calls out a lot of those um, kind of stories, but it's done in the style of artwork that's so 90s in this time period. It's very nostalgia for me. But I think for a lot of people, and since it's missing Harley Quinn, are just going to be like, you know, this set's a little over the top. <laughs> and so I'll give you some ideas. So I'm not, I'm going to show you the whole set, but just some cards. Like, so here's one of the Joker cards in the set. You can just see that is one of the, you know, extreme Joker, you know, teeth and smile, very exaggerated, you know, uh, card. And you can see the back there on this one. Now, there's multiple artists in the set. This is Carl. Critchley, Critchlo, I don't know, like not an artist I really, you know, know too much because these are, and this is one of the reasons why this set I think also never really caught on was if you look at what Marvel does is they sometimes will pit cover art or art from, you know, artists who drew the character in the, in the books. From what I can tell, this is just kind of like, commission art from new artists that are they're paying homage to different series of, of Batman or different stories. But the art's good, but again, very exaggerated. So here is, you know, again, Joker with a giant face and, and smile. And again, you know, um, very, very exaggerated. But here's a great Poison Ivy. 
which is why I got this set was that there's some really good art and early and it's it's high and it's high quality cards. You got, you know, silver foil, uh, full bleed art, very Fleur Ultra Skybox-esque uh, product. And again, this product was made by Skybox, so it makes sense. Um, here's a cat, uh, sorry, yeah, a Catwoman in the classic Catwoman outfit. Uh, very nice card. But here's also, again, why I say it's the most emo of sets, is like here is, uh, I think this is a Vampire um, or the Batman Who Laughs. Um, I don't actually, it's not that Batman, but it's just like, I think right around the time of Batman, the vampire. So you get, you know, this kind of crazy looking Batman, um, you know, just super exaggerated, um, features on this card, very long and pointy ears. And you gotta remember at this time period in Batman world, um, there was this kind of running joke in Batman books, how long and pointy could they make the ears at this time? If you read a lot of articles about the artist and, and the creators around this time period of Batman, they were trying to do it because DC got kind of mad about it. And so they kept trying to do the ears long and skinny and they kept making them bigger and bigger. And so go back and look at covers of Batman during that time period. You'll see that there's just for no reason the, the ears on Batman are just super long and skinny. And, and I think it was just kind of an inside joke among creators. Um, again, when I talk about callbacks, so this is obviously a death in the family callback where Joker kills uh, Jason Todd and the, the, the you know, and you see death in the families on the back of the card. So it's obviously talking about that story. Um, you know, this one's just as target practice and you got, you know, a picture of, um, you know, Joker shooting Batman. And again, this is probably from a specific story that I'm just not familiar with. Cause I, I haven't read every Batman, you know, um, graphic novel or short story, but it just gives you, gives you some flavor what the cards look like. Uh, I got the full set, um, pretty cheap and I want to open a full box because I think it'd just be fun. I also want to look at opening the first box of Batman adventures trading cards that has the first Harley Quinn. I think that would be a very fun product to open. Uh, so maybe I can find a box of that at the national. And that's what, when I talk about going to the national, doing stuff like that is fun. Like finding a box of Batman Adventures or, you know, uh, Batman the Animated Adventures, like first series with the Harley Quinn in it. You know, finding some, you know, really fun uh, unopened wax to open at the show that you can't find locally without having to pay the shipping and all the eBay fees. That would be a lot of fun. So those are the kind of things I look forward to doing at, at the national versus like having like a list of cards I'm just going to try to check off. I, usually it doesn't work out that way. Um, Bobby Mitchell, 61 top. So he's a hall of famer and this is a seven A guy was breaking up a full set. So I picked up a few cards from that set. I always like the set 61 set, um, cool photos. This is obviously one of those rub, um, photos. So good thing it's not rub because that hurts the value and the, um, raid. Next up is another card from that series. So this is tom flores and he just made the hall of fame and this is a psa 8 rookie card so i picked it up just because i like having hall of fame rookie cards football cards are so cheap right now that it just um you know picking up hall of fame rookie cards like this is so easy compared to baseball and other sports that when i get chances to to pick them up you know i i do and so um you know i wasn't really looking for a tom flores card but it was cheap enough and uh, and it was a good condition card i went ahead and grabbed it uh, next up is a card for my emerging Barry Sanders set. So this is 1997 Skybox Metal Platinum Portraits. Now, for people who are into this, um, you know, Platinum Portraits, um, you know, that just came out in Sky uh, and Skybox Metal X-Men, those Platinum Portraits are going for a lot of money. So I thought getting the Sanders right now would be great. Um, and I got to look over the condition to see if it's if it's going to be worth grading. Um, I don't know if this is a little dent in the card here or if it's uh, part of the photo. I can't tell. I just got to look at the card under some microscope. But that's a little bit of a dent or whatever. Then the card's not worth grading. But uh, this is a pretty rare card. And so I went ahead and grabbed it. I didn't, um, you know, it wasn't overly expensive. But, um, and it went through, obviously, the eBay authentication. So um, nice to pick up. Kind of a rare, again, a pretty rare um, insert from the nineties for Barry Sanders there. 
And even if it's in, you know, the amount I paid and the condition it is, it's still worth picking up because those cards are just so rare. They just don't come up for very, very often. Um, I'm a, you know, obviously a Steelers and a Pirate fan. So picking up a 98 Crusade Cordell Stewart. Again, these are numbered to 250 um, at a super cheap rate. Um, it's funny because I saw some of his PMGs, like numbered to 100, sell for like a lot of money. I'm like, Wow, I'd rather have a Crusade than some of those PMGs because I think the Crusades are better looking cards. Uh, again, my love of Refractor. So I picked up this 97 Thurman Thomas um, Refractor um, PSA 8. So just a early set Refractor of a Hall of Famer. And last but not least, and this is one of those players I do think you might want to look at picking up at the National, is Tom Brady PSA 7 rookie card. And, you know, I would say, like, you can definitely find probably a lot of deals in eight and nine rookie cards of Brady at the National because I think everything went up so high that those cards are going to be the first thing people kind of sell. Keep the tens and get rid of the seven, eights, and nines. And so if you're just looking to get into the Brady market, looking to get some cool Brady rookie cards and not pay, you know, $1,000 per rookie card in a PSA seven, this definitely can be, um, you know, a good show for you. And I think Brady definitely has some opportunity to, um, probably go up, um, you know, from where it's at now, if he plays well, if he doesn't play well the next year, then and he doesn't make the playoffs, for example, then, you know, his cards could, could crack. And, you know, cause again, they went up so high, so, so high that there had to be some level of correction, um, for some of those cards, because, some aren't really that rare. Next up is baseball. So it's a really big mixed bag. So here's a 2002 Topps Chrome Refractor of Mike Piatta. It's just a Chrome Refractor. It looks like it's a gold refractor, but I believe it's just a base refractor. It's not numbered. And I think that year the set actually, the, the cards actually were kind of goldish. Um, they, that was just the color of the cards. Um, I always pick up heritage inserts of just players and, Heritage has gotten so weird, you know, with all the chrome and inserts and refractors, and it's turned away from what it kind of was core, which is a few inserts and, and autos, but still good looking product. And I do like the 73 set. So, so I picked up this uh, Mike Trout. This is a variant. This is a, I think it says color swap. Um, let's see what this is right there. Yeah, color swap. And I believe. It is the name of angels is a different color uh, on this card than the than the other than the base version. So it's a variant of Mike Trout. So I picked up that card. I uh, picked up one of these um, blue sparkle or purple sparkle. I think blue sparkle. I keep Brian Hayes, who's one of the best players the Pirates have. Um, one of the few good players the Pirates still have. He's still really young. This is his rookie cup and just a cool sparkly card for like three or four dollars. Um, picked up this Mike Stanton, you know, refractor, and these are numbered out of, um, 879, I think, 879, Let's see, no, 679, sorry, um, or 673, gosh, you can't even read right now, and I just always pick up, you know, cards, and I think Stanton's close to getting, um, he's, he's on the sort of Hall of Fame track, so, um, you know, again, these are like four or five dollar cards, so I'm just, Picking up, you know, these heritage cards when I can find them really cheap. Um, one of my other, you know, sets I've been picking up or player to pick up for sets. This is uh, from 19, I believe, 99 finest. Um, this is the, the Milestone Hits Frank Thomas Refractor, number to 3000. So this is the easiest one to hit. Um, yeah, from 1999 tops. So, um, Top's finest. So these are kind of ugly, but there's numbering out to like 500, I think 1200, 3000. So this is probably the easiest refractor to hit a Frank Thomas, but a cool card. And I like the fact that back is refractory. So there you go. For my Frank Thomas set. Uh, again, I mentioned I like 73. So I did pick up this 73 Raleigh Fingers PSA 8. And the thing that's kind of crazy was I did actually need this card. And, uh, you know, I don't always have these kind of minor players um, in my Hall of Fame um, collection by year. Um, you know, because I, I kind of like 
hey, let me get the bigger cards first. And then, fortunately, Raleigh Fingers isn't a bigger card uh, in these sets. So if you're a big Raleigh Fingers fan, no offense, but he's not the I kind of what I call like top tier Hall of Famer. Um, so, you know, I go after the other guys first, just kind of how I do it. Um, you think it'd be easier just to get all the cheap guys first and then get the expensive guys last, but I actually can't always do it reverse. Now, this is a very cool Griffey, so I'm on to my couple of Griffey cards here I picked up. Platinum team set, 95 score, just a really sparkly, cool card. Um, there's the back of that card. Just a fun card. Sort of rare, doesn't come up that often. And, you know, they made really cool inserts, Score and Pinnacle did. And they don't get a lot of credit for it, but this is definitely one of those cool designs. And then last but not least, I did have this on my Instagram, but this card's really cool. And it's a card I've wanted for a long time, and it's the 2009 Upper Deck Ultimate Collection. Um, and this is numbered to 24. So this is a really tough card. And so th some things about it that I think people just need to understand is that this card is from when he played for the Mariners. So you got to remember that he went back to the Mariners after he played for the White Sox and the Reds. And he ended his career with the with the Seattle and retired. In 2009, so in 2008 and 2009, he was playing. I think in 2009, he went back to Seattle um, and played for them and then retired. Um, so if you look at, you know, there's, I think, 2009 and maybe even 2010 cards. So it, you know, have Griffey as a as a Seattle Mariner. Some of them have him still as a White Sox, but this is a plain year card. So this isn't like a card that was issued after he quit playing. Also, it's when he's played for the Mariner. So this is not a kind of a throwback card. So this is like a current year, current team card. So it's still a Mariner's card. It's a very nice auto. And then... um Upper Deck lost their baseball license, I believe, in the 2009s, in that 2009 year. And so they didn't release every set. They just inserted a lot of them into, like, the product they already had made. And so Ultimate Signatures was, I think, supposed to come out as a separate set. They just packed it out under in Upper Deck in the base set. And so you could pull really, really cool autos out of base set that year, um, like this Griffey Jr. You can see the back. And... Um, one of the cooler, not 90s, but it's called playing your Griffey autos that I have. So that is the uh, mail day for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and let me know what you think. Um, let me know what you think about um, the national video I'm trying to work on, if you think that would be a cool idea. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time. And hopefully you've been enjoying my content lately. I've been trying to do a little bit more often. Um, and uh, I'll catch you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.